We're going to call the meeting to order. Welcome to the Brunswick County Board of Education meeting for March 1st, 2022. And we're going to start off with a moment of silence. And next up, we'll have the presentation of the colors and the Pledge of Allegiance by the West Brunswick High School JROTC under the leadership of Cadet Command Sergeant Major Leonard. Board members, tonight you have in front of you the regular meeting agenda. If I, if I can have a motion for approval. Motion. motion by Mr. Robinson. Second. Second by Ms. Moffitt. All in favor say aye. 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 And next up we have public address. Uh, Mr. Green, if you could please read the rules for public address. Um, <clears throat> according to policy 2310, Presentations will be limited to five minutes per person. And discussions regarding particular individual employees, litigation, student records, or other matters may be required to be kept confidential, may not be discussed in open forum setting. Uh, the chairman will have the responsibility to determine matters of discussion that may be inappropriate and rule the speaker out of order if necessary. Uh, we've got the timer, so you, we have two speakers. Mr. Green, could you clarify? I believe it's a three-minute time limit, not a five. Oh, did I say five? Yes, yes sir. It's three minutes. Is uh, Chris Russ present? Mr. Russ, do you want to speak first? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Christopher Russ. As we start this, I just think about where we're at in this country and where we've fallen whenever we have a uh, moment of silence instead of a public prayer to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let that resonate in your head for a second. Um, Folks, I'm here. If you got the beacon last week, anybody seen it, I'm here, and you know the issues that I have with my daughter. I'd like to also state that I've had another daughter who's had uh, COVID and all the rules and regulations in this toolkit has had a real negative impact on her through the virtual learning and through the masking and everything else. So I've got two children who've been negatively impacted by government overreach, political theater, and outright status propaganda that we've all fallen into. Now, folks, if there's anybody here on this from the superintendent, any of y'all that actually believe in this and actually believe in what the CDC says, the Biden administration, the tyrant in Raleigh and Cooper, or the DHHS, I don't know what to tell you. But you like common sense and critical thinking, and I'm just being honest with you. You do. Okay? If you do it just because you've got an allegiance to a political party, I don't know what to tell you about that either because uh, your, your best interest is not my child. Okay, folks, what we had to do, not dressing y'all, and I didn't come here, I'm not yelling and screaming at you guys. I understand a thumb that's on top of you. And what we had to do, citizenry, we need to educate ourselves. You know one of the first things we all need to do? Cut off the news. 
Okay, those of you on the right, cut Fox News off. You can watch Tucker. He's the only one that makes any sense anyhow. If you're on the left and you actually and you put in all that in every, in every day, statewide propaganda mess pumped in your head. If you believe that, I don't really know what to tell you, but I wish we could all get past it and get past politics because, look, you've got information. Here's a doctor's organization that treated over 150,000 COVID patients, 99.99% effectiveness. Vaccine is never used. No, it was some vitamins, zinc, ivermectin. How about Dr. Robert Malone? who actually created the strand that the father of mRNA where the vaccine comes from, who says we need to stop giving this out to people because informed consent ain't being followed. Nuremberg Court is being violated. Do we care? No, we follow along blindly and that's all us. We need to stop. We need to have a voice. We need to, we need to put pressure on elected representatives, on people throughout government and say, listen, we've had enough. We're mad as hell and we're not going to take it anymore. We say, well, they will strip the funding from the school board. Well, let me tell you something. If it all got started on a grassroots level and you didn't have one school board that said they weren't going to take it, you had two, three, you get up to 10 or 20. The guy in Raleigh has not got the political guts to strip the funding of 20 or 30 school boards. We make a stand and our voice is heard. And lastly, for you guys, if you will do that, if you will support my right as a parent to make decisions for my child, and you will do what is in the best interest of my child and everybody else's children, I promise you we will back you. We will follow you through the gates of hell if you'll do what is right. May God curse those who want to destroy this democratic republic. May he bless the patriots who want to destroy Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Russ. And next up we have Lou Almighty. all for you, and I believe everything you said, and I've studied into that too. Anyway, I'm Lou Hermati. I once was an educator from sixth grade to high school to college, just like some of you are. But if I told you that I'm a refugee, would you take me in? The Baptist Church did in 1956. The Russians attacked my city. They shelled my area, and I did not sleep for three days and nights. We moved from location to location. I ran towards the approaching tanks and within 30 feet, uh, and I hid within, within 30 feet of them as they passed by me. Jesus said in Matthew, I was hungry, but you did not feed me. I was thirsty, but you did not give me drink. I was a stranger, but you did not welcome me. Naked, but you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, but you did not, did not care for me. We have a covenant relationship with God, family, and man. Here's some examples. Marriage and the family. God and, uh, excuse me, the Good Samaritan story, we all know that. The Mayflower Compact, some of us know that. And with our Creator. To save our nation and soul, God said, if they pray to me, repent, and turn from the evil, then I will hear them, forgive their sins, make their land prosperous again. We must fill the human soul with the word of God, with the truth and education, daily prayer, fellowship and worship the Lord. We must forgive each other, or said 70 times seven, if we are going to save our nation. And we must reject, the, uh, reject Satan and his works. Some of them are critical race theory, woke, abortion, Gender, gender transformation, hate, and racism, to mention just a few of them. For the kingdom of God is within your soul, within us. Therefore, uh, holiness, excuse me, th therefore you can possess God's grace, peace, holiness, love, and healing power. For we are one people, one human race, one nation of the God. We will end. We have the same human rights to life, liberty, property, and pursuit of happiness under the Constitution. Now, the other thing I'm going to mention, I left the box over there, but I sent that box to, I don't know, Bosnia, Ukraine. I don't know where that went. And there's two things I put in the box. Number one, the Bible. Number two, the Constitution. And I outlined it. Now, why would I send the Constitution? I understand the Bible to some foreign country that maybe don't read English because America is the only land that, is, that the law doesn't come from government, it comes from God directly. 
That's why we have inalienable rights. That's why it's important for those people to know. When I travel overseas, that's why I tell people about America. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lou. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up we have presentations, and first up we have Alyssa Watkins from Schneider Electric. Good evening. I'm Elisa Watkins. For those of you that do not know me, but I think I know most everybody, and this is Donna Bird. She works with me at Snyder Electric, and she is a Brunswick County um, resident as well, and I appreciate you having us here tonight. We did want to share with you a, a video, a quick video about your school district and um, how well Brunswick County Schools is doing among North Carolina K through 12s. Um, we're excited to, to share this information with you. Some of you have already seen a little peek of the video, but we would like to share that with you, and then I'd like to present an award if that's okay. You got it, brother. Brunswick County, being along the coastline in North Carolina, experiences a lot of harsh conditions, especially any equipment that's outside is going to get attacked by the salt air. When I came here, because of smaller, we had air conditioning systems in uh, more than one school that just wouldn't run consistently. The, the state of repair, the systems, we had a lot of problems. The Center of Applied Science and Technology, which is the coast, was started five years ago. The district had a vision to move towards uh, providing students district-wide with some specialized career technical uh, education classes. Well, we're a coastal community for sure. We're right over the Atlantic, and we have multiple beaches. The challenges that we take on, you know, living in a coastal community is the flooding. Uh, drainage is always an issue, plus the high humidity in this area. We did not have enough money to do the type of, and the amount of mechanical improvements that we needed to do, so we started looking for another way to do it. They were looking at a bond at the time, and at that point, that's when we approached the school district and talked to them about going through the proposal phase of an energy performance contract. Schneider Electric has provided us with a tremendous opportunity to control their indoor environment. We found lots of opportunity, let's say, in the district for improvement to the facilities, including reducing energy use, improving indoor air quality, improving the learning environment. With Schneider redoing all our HVAC and our building controls has really helped us be able to control the indoor environment with the respects to humidity. And that truly has been a plus for us. Another important component of the performance contract was replacing all of our T8, T12 lights throughout the school district with uh, LED lighting. That provided much better lighting for students and staff, and plus the additional energy cost savings that comes along with that. We have saved so much money. We've saved a million dollars already. They knew that in my clean energy technologies program, we, we did a lot with building power. So we were invited to sit in on a meeting with Schneider Electric. And during that meeting, we made some really great connections and, and talked about what our program was doing here at the coast with clean energy. It gives us an opportunity to use the data that Schneider has access to and apply that into our own teaching and learning so that we get that real world context. It's really great to see that Brunswick County Schools is partnering with a company like Schneider to keep our uh, facilities up to date and innovative and you know it's a great place to work and we don't have to worry about our uh, classrooms not being the thing that we need them to be to do our job. You know we know that we have what we need to, to teach our students. Um, I'm very proud to be here tonight uh, before you all and um, present to you a, 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 a Brunswick County Schools was nominated by myself into Snyder Electric and we're a national company and we have we do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of um, projects each year with K through 12s and each region um, nominates many clients 
uh, that we think are being great energy partners um, that are overachieving, that are trying to do right for their students, for their community. And um, we submitted Brunswick County Schools, and it's voted on by our executive leadership team. And Brunswick County has received um, an Energy Champion Award, and I'm proud to present that. Um, this was achieved by partnering with you. You, are, you look forward in the future, and you're trying to do good technologies for your, your staff, your students, and your, your taxpayers. So you're doing very good stewards of the money. Um, in, in 2017, we started our partnership with you um, in trying to save energy. You have saved, um, in, in the video, I think um, at that time, you had saved over a million dollars, and you have considerably every year can continue to save more and more money. Um, so this was voted on by the, elect, um, the leadership team of Brunswick, I mean, of Snyder Electric for Brunswick County Schools. This could not have happened if it was not for uh, Kim Harmon, Sue Rutledge, and the whole operations team has been phenomenal. Um, your IT department, Deborah Bear, everybody has been phenomenal to work with, and we are constantly looking and striving at where we can make your schools more energy efficient and still keep it very comfortable, increase learning, and cut down on the humidity. Now you can control humidity that you didn't have the ability to several years ago. And we continue to look and see where there are other areas that Brunswick County Schools can um, achieve more goals. Um, so I'm proud to present this. I'd like to, Dr. Oates, could I present this to you, please? You can present that to Sue Rutledge. Yes. I, she got, deserves I've got, it. I've got one more. So I, I'd like to present this one to the Board of Education, if you'd allow me to do I'll that. I'll give them that but all of this is doing work. <laughs> And this is a uh, North Carolina K-12 Energy Champion that runs with County Schools. Um, okay. We got, we got a couple. Over. Yeah, we got a couple. We want to uh, board members. Could we get you uh, to be a part of the, the, the picture? Can we go right here? Kim. Kim. Oh, yeah. Kim. Sue, could you come up, please? Oh, right. <laughs> If, you can, if I can't see you, <laughs> you're not in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Don't let the glare. Miss Moffat, there you go. Can I get on your shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Everybody in three, two, one. One more time. Three, two, one. All right. If I could ask Sue and Kim to stand up here, please. I think you can. I want my heels. <laughs> and Kim, if you'll stand here with us. What book is that going on? So I have a special award um, that goes individually to an individual who has been a, a, an awesome member of your team at Brunswick County Schools who has taken it to heart um, about trying to make your schools a better place. She has got a phenomenal operations team. You have a phenomenal financial team, and you have a phen phenomenal IT team here at Brunswick County Schools. But it has been a pleasure to work with Sue Rutledge, and I nominated you, and you were um, – awarded the North Carolina K-12 Energy Champion as an individual in the state. Wow. Um, so this, this award goes to Sue Rutledge. Yay! Thank you. He wants to get in. Oh, that's not surprising. With the logo to you. All right, guys. You go, Sue. That's what we're talking about. All right, guys. I'm always taking credit for Kim Harmon's good work. <laughs> All, right. All right, in three, two, one. One more. Three, two, one. That's a wrap. Again, thank you for your time. And again, I cannot commend you enough on your um, your team that you have here. You have a phenomenal team. And um, it, it continues to shine throughout the state. And um, I always talk about how great Brunswick County Schools is um, within the state when I'm out and about. So thank you. And thank you. you should be very proud of your staff and your um, yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And next up from the North Brunswick High School National Honor Society, we have Ms. Kaler and Ms. Simmons. They're going to stay. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mary Catherine Kaler. I'm the co-advisor of National Honor Society at North Brunswick High School. Um, Ms. Simons was not able to join me tonight. Um, the North Brunswick, High, North Brunswick High School National Honor Society has decided that we, this year, that we are going to um, 
honor those that have put in extra hours at our school and also in the community. So this year we have presented each of the coaches um, so far a um, small card and a small piece of candy. And we also um, presented our school bus drivers with that as well today. So today, last um, month was National School Board Appreciation. And so I'm here to represent to you a card and some candy for your commit, sorry, your commitment and your <laughs> investment into our employees as well as our students. So I'll start with um, Stephen Berger. Thank you so much. He's not here. Dr. Rosa, hold on to a form. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much for letting me attend tonight's meeting. I'm going to go because we're also in charge of concessions, so there's a baseball game tonight. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you. Much. Thank you. And next up, we have the teacher's voice with Ms. O'Hara. Follow with other great things. So I thought I would share tonight some of the wonderful things that are going on throughout our schools in our county. Um, so uh, this month, our middle school Battle of the Books teams um, recently competed in their county competition, and our Cedar Grove Bulldogs won, and now they are headed to the regionals. Um, Virginia Williamson Elementary School had their letter, um, letter land parade. Uh, you probably saw that on Facebook. Uh, the Coast held a college and career fest for middle school and high school students. Uh, the high school science Olympiad teams uh, participated in the virtual portion of the UNCW regional competition. And then this week, um, they'll be doing the in-person uh, part. Um, the high schools are doing curriculum fair nights for rising freshmen. West Brunswick is actually tonight. South was last week. Um, South Brunswick High School is hosting their annual prom closet. Uh, Shalote Middle School is holding a Run the Shamrocks Fun Run. Uh, North Brunswick High School is presenting Frozen Junior the Musical. West Brunswick High School Theater Arts and Drama Club is presenting the Freedom Riders. Um, and then the Cape Fear Voices is now spotlighting student, student writers throughout all school levels. And so I brought a copy of that, but you can see uh, middle school, high school students, and elementary students sharing their writing um, through this uh, newspaper. Um, and then also, I would like to spotlight, um, the last few months, uh, as I'm Teacher of the Year, I'd like to spotlight some of the other amazing educators in our county. Um, and so tonight, I'm going to spotlight um, our Cedar Grove Math Interventionist. Um, this is a new position that they created because of the COVID, um, the pandemic. Um, and she has just gone above and beyond in this role, as they all have. Um, so I'm just going to share a little bit of data um, that she's done this, this school year. So um, first of all, it is Miss Caroline Griffin. Um, she tracks their growth each week, each month, 
uh, each day, each week, and each month. Um, she motivates the students. She holds them accountable. Um, she collaborates with the grade level math teachers. Um, they've created ways for students to actually graduate out of uh, the intervention program. Um, so far this year, she's had 12 students exit the math program. Um, she's had several students grow three grade levels in mathematics. Um, and some of them are already within one semester of being back on grade level. Um, she also has had 10 students who are showing 100 to 200 points of growth. Um, she's had four students grow 200 to 300 points of growth. And she's had one student that's grown almost 400 points of growth. They've gone from a third grade level um, all the way up to a sixth grade level um, and have already mastered 80% of that sixth grade level. And that's just amazing. And that's not even a full year of school. Um, and then in the Math 180, that was for IXL. And then for Math 180, um, she's had students who are showing an average of 90 to 100, 120 points per points of growth per student and have surpassed their mid-year goals for growth at the school level and the district level. Um, she's had an entire group of 12 seventh graders show so much growth that they were able to create a brand new class teaching course two material, which is actually content on grade level. So Math 180 is a program that teaches skills that they were missing, and they've already graduated out of that and are now on um, uh, seventh grade level where they should be. That's just amazing. Um, and so I have a video that I would like to show. Griffin, and I am the math interventionist here at Cedar Grove Middle School. That it is to help students to show growth, proficiency, and mastery in their overall math skills for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade and that we are specifically using two research-based math programs, using the Math 180 program for 6th and 7th grade, and we're using IXL for 8th grade. The next question was, how do you motivate your students? And so what we decided we would do is we would compete over their minutes because minutes equates to growth. We have some really exciting rewards right now. Uh, we had someone who donated beef jerky to us and the students are really excited about the beef jerky. Um, and then we have just some other food rewards. And then all of the students get the opportunity to win a reward if they get 110 minutes for the third nine weeks. Um, and then the other part of motivating students helping them to take responsibility for their learning. And so what I've done is I've just put out a bunch of the sheets that I have created. And all of these sheets are filled out on a weekly basis or a daily basis. We have tracking sheets. And we were able to come up with a system of how students could actually graduate out of a math intervention class and get back to their regular electives. And I put the data down. Um, because this is just what is so exciting and motivating for both the 8th graders and also for the teachers. So um, 12 of the 8th graders were able to graduate or exit the math intervention program because they showed anywhere from 150 to 390 points of growth in their overall math skills for IXL. And we had several students who grew over three grade levels. And then another exciting thing that happened is that we had a group of seven, 12 seventh graders that showed so much growth on their second math inventory that we were able to create an entire new class of 12 students that are currently on course two of Math 1 Able. Ask what do I love about being uh, a math interventionist, and I just want to say that I love everything about being a math interventionist. Um, and I'm just really excited about students getting a growth mindset instead of a fixed mindset. I'm really excited about the mastering, showing proficiency, showing growth, and I, I love the fact that they can take responsibility for their own skills and they can get excited about it and they can come into a really safe environment, have a lot of fun. Hi, my name is Nicole and I'm going to take on Ted Math We need to get 100 minutes each week to be free words. Math and Learning teachers are very persevering. For example, we're having we challenge six days to get a party on class and tomorrow we're going to have a team to beat them. Also, speaking of work, Ms. Griffin always helps us learn something new 
and she's such a hard worker and encourages us every day. And I appreciate her so much because she makes me think I can do this. She's such a hard worker and she tries so hard and spends her, all her money to satisfy my classmates and I. We're so thankful for this person. My name is Minero, I'm in sixth grade, and so about my grade, she gives us fever awards if we go home and do our minutes. We have a fantastic teacher named Ms. Griffin, and she is very nice and helps us get proficient in math. At work, and she tries to make us better. And it works. She never thinks about herself and always thinks about us. And I think we can do better to have her as a teacher. Hi, my name is Julia, and I'm in sixth grade. Math really means a lot to me because it helps my math intelligence. I go home almost every day and work on the Math 180 program. Mm -hmm. A phenomenal teacher, Ms. Griffin, spends her money on candy. If we get 110 minutes, we get a piece of candy. But the most thing is that Ms. Griffin is a great teacher and is helping my math skills. Hi, I'm Lola and I'm in sixth grade. And Math Lady is a math intervention and gives all of her students a growth mentality and mindset. And let's talk about an amazing math lady teacher. Her name is Miss Griffin. She spends her own money just for us to grow and enjoy math. I hate math, math, but now I feel confident in my abilities. She spends one-on-one -on -one time with her students and gives fun competitions for all of her students. Even I go home and spend my own time playing math lady. Take it from me, this math lady class just cannot be beat. We didn't know middle schoolers love snacks <laughs> and that motivates them <laughs> but I would like to uh, recognize Miss Griffin she's actually here today so if she would stand this is Miss Caroline Griffin And um, I'm sure many of you are aware that this week is Read Across America Week, um, and a lot of the elementary and middle schools um, are doing a lot of fun presentations and read-alouds um, at their schools. So I thought I would end with a poem by Beryl L. Edmonds, and it's called Teachers. Teachers proudly stand in front of the class with knowledge and influence in mass, igniting a flame in curious minds proficiently as the lessons unwind, teaching a calling that burns deep inside to instruct thirsty, inquisitive minds, installing passion that leads to success, inspiring pupils to give of their best, encouraging scholars' creative gifts, praising, applauding, whatever it is. Those who are taught well, live well, get ahead. Blessed are the teachers, it has to be said. It doesn't go unnoticed, the work involved, developing great people to evolve. All humble, nurturing teachers out there, thank you all for your compassionate care. Those who go on to find their hopes and dreams, remember the teachers who cast the beams. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Board members, we're at the approval of the minutes now. We have uh, meeting minutes from the February 1st, 2022 regular board meeting. February 15th, Operations, Curriculum, and Finance Committee. Motion, motion to approve. A motion by Mr. Benton to approve the minutes. Second. Second by Mr. Robinson. All in favor say aye. 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 And next up we have the consent agenda. Anybody want to pull anything from consent? All right, if I can hear a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Benton, second by Mr. Robinson. All in favor say aye. 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 And next up is the action agenda. And the first item is the 2022 E-rate filings. Uh, Ms. Deborah Bear. Good evening, board members. It's that time of the year. It's time to file for E-rate with the federal government. We love E-rate. We get huge discounts from the federal government for telecommunication services, equipment, cabling, things like that. So 
our existing service that we have with Atlantic Sea Winds Communication LLC is for our wide area network services. It's discounted at 90%. Uh, cabling for recabling our schools is discounted at 85%. So this evening we're bringing to you, um, seeking your approval to approve the file, the filing of these E-rate applications for telecommunication services totaling $826,900.32. And secondly, to approve the application for cabling services, which would be new cabling installed at Jesse May Monroe Elementary. Leland Middle School and Southport Elementary totaling $857,404.08. So the wide area network expenses are local expenses and new cabling expenses, our part will be funded with the bond program. Any questions? Uh, with no questions. With no questions, do I hear a motion to approve? Motion. Motion by Mr. Robinson, second by Ms. Moffitt. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Board members, the second item tonight is, is Senate Bill 654, which is the uh, masking uh, guidelines. Uh, Dr. Rose, do you have anything to add? Nothing to add, just that this is the mandated vote that the board across the state have to take until something changes with the bill that was vetoed last week. Yeah, I believe uh, our state representatives are working on uh, ending our, our need to do this each month, but uh, I believe our board's in agreement tonight that we're going to keep things the way they are and uh, keep the masks off our students. Does anybody have anything else to add? Question. Uh, Dr. Roger, are we hearing any information as to when the federal uh, mandate would possibly expire regarding the buses? As far as the buses, I'm glad you brought that up. That is has expired as far as last week, uh, Friday of last week. The conveyances, the federal guidelines, no mask are now on any um, public transportation. So buses are without mask as well. Just wanted to make sure the public was aware of that. Thank you. All right, so if I can hear a motion to keep the uh, masking guidelines as they're written, which is uh, mask optional district wide. Motion. Okay. Motion by Mr. Robinson, second by Ms. Moffitt. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I don't think we should even be voting on this any longer. I mean, all right, Mr. Benton opposes it. All right, and that ends the regular agenda. Uh, next, we have discussion. Uh, Dr. Oates. Um, just two quick things I wanted to recognize. First of all, uh, give some recognition to our all of our men's basketball teams made it to the playoffs. Um, and the women's basketball team at West Brunswick High School made it to the playoffs as well. And um, right now we have the West men's and women's teams made it, making it to the second round. So congratulations to those young folks. Um, and also, this was brought up by Ms. O'Hara earlier uh, with the CTE career fair being held. It was held here at the coast. I just wanted to just to say it was a very exciting time in this building. Ms. Moffitt was here, and she can attest to it. Um, we had a large number of our middle school and high school students come through here with our education education partners in aerospace engineering, automotive, clean energy, clean energy engineering, culinary, cybersecurity, and digital animation and design. So these kids were actually talking to people in these industries um, and having an opportunity to ask questions, um, to look at some, some future careers. We went out to the automotive um, area we saw the race car that was there i don't know if you got in the race you got in the race car they were trying to get me in it but i, I no i declined i didn't get in that um so i wanted to give mr cheers an opportunity to elaborate on that since that came under um cte but it was a phenomenal job done by the cte department thank you dr Hudson. our goal this first time was to focus on the uh, programs offered here the pathways here at the coast uh, we had a tremendous response from our colleges and universities uh, representing three states. Uh, we had several from North Carolina as well as University of Tennessee and Pittsburgh Aeronautical Institute. So a uh, great support there. Our local employers, uh, they were very uh, supportive and, and looking here. Many of them had applications out on their tables as they were visiting with our students. But one of the things that, that struck me uh, uh, the most about the whole process was how many of the folks commented to me the behavior of our students uh, and the questioning of our students. They were very 
uh, pleased and, and uh, amazed at how well our kids, the questioning level, especially of our middle school kids. So uh, uh, I think it was a big success. We're surveying our uh, uh, employers and universities this week. Uh, we're planning to have the fair again in February of 23, and we'll add the programs, the pathways from the traditional high schools to the career fair that we had uh, this year. Can you speak to um, what you guys are doing in the middle school now as far as educating kids about different careers? I mean, it starts so much younger. I think that would be good if you could explain that. Yes, ma'am. Well. We actually have two uh, full-time career development coordinators that work in our middle schools, and they're focusing on uh, exposure, uh, exploration, so that students can, can understand what is a career. And they actually even go down to fifth grade and do some work with our fifth graders as well. Uh, next week, the all eighth graders in the county will take a tour of the coast and see the programs that we offer here, as well as visit their uh, high schools. That will be coming up very soon to see not just the career and technical education, but all the, the uh, courses that are offered at their high school. But that's a key component getting into the middle school and having them exposed to those opportunities. That's all I have. Anything else? <clears throat> Board members, do I have a motion to go into closed session? Motion by Mr. Benton. Second. Second by Ms. Moffitt. All better say aye. Aye. <laughs>